an unforgettable panorama in the Scottish borders is the expansive vista of the Eildon Hills. Now, my viewpoint is different from Scott's view. That is on the B6356 road. Instead, I offer the prospect from the banks of the River Tweed at Dryburg, and I'll come back to this a bit later. These hills are in the Eildon and Leaderfoot National Scenic Area. The main town is Melrose, where I alighted the bus from Berwick-upon-Tweed, and I could use my bus pass as my journey started in England. In the town are the imposing ruins of Melrose Abbey. It was founded in 1136 by Cistercian monks and built in the Gothic style. The heart of Robert the Bruce is said to have been buried in the church. It is indicated by a marker. Whilst at the abbey it clouded over, but I was able to concentrate on the delicate tracery of the ruined windows. The lower dynamic range helped the shots of the vaulted roof. Later, the clouds parted, the sun now adding a touch of light and shade to the exterior views. St. Cuthbert is strongly connected with the area. Later, to make his mark at Lindisfarne in Northumberland during the 7th century, St. Cuthbert's way starts in Melrose, where he began his religious life. But as the path passes over the summit of the Eildon Hills, and it was still cloudy, I chickened out, opting instead for the more sedate route of the Borders Abbey Way. At Dryburg, or do we pronounce it Dryburg? Anyway, here we encounter Sir Walter Scott, who, in the 19th century, would pull up his horse to admire the view of the Eildon Hills from the road that is now the B6356. He is buried at Dryburg Abbey, but first my angle on the Scots view, with the River Tweed in the foreground leading the eye towards the Eildon Hills. There is even a seat to rest your weary loins. The weather had improved, so essential for the big view, but shooting into the light over water. Now the dynamic range shoots up. To avoid flare, I spot meter and use a small aperture, risking, yes, risking diffraction. In my opinion, the lesser of the two evils, the other, of course, being flare. Furthermore, some work was necessary in post-production to balance highlights with shadows, something we could not do with film, especially transparencies. There is still a high dynamic range for shots at Dryburg Abbey, but not to the same degree. Nevertheless, I made minor adjustments in post-production, preserving shadow detail and correcting blown-out highlights. I saved to RAW, so that task was made easier as the image is unprocessed, until, of course, I saved to a JPEG, which is what you are now looking at. As I returned on the bus from St. Boswell's, I reflected on a very productive and satisfactory day. But above all else, I had worked with weather, choosing subjects according to the prevailing light condition.